Well, I have to admit, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, I only got about 150 or so comments from the last video. About half the amount from the last What's Your Opinion video, but... That's kind of better for you guys, because that means I'm actually going to go into these comments individually instead of bunching them up. There's only one of them I'm going to bunch up, but for the most part, in fact, all of it after that, I'm going to be going into individual comments. But first I would like to say that I'm only going to be reading comments from people's opinions who have actually played the game. No offense, but it would make more sense to have an opinion on the game if you've actually played it. So far, every comment I've had, who has at least played the game, we all agree on two things. It's either the best, or one of the best titles in the series, and that most of the new Pokemon designs suck. Everyone's pretty much unanimous with that, so <laughs> no surprise there. Even those who are disappointed with the third and fourth generation are saying it's great, it's fantastic, it definitely recaptures the feeling of the old games. I'm not sure why the third generation is hated so much, I actually really love it. It's actually one of my favorites in the series, but I'll go into more about that a little bit later. This is going to be the only bunched up comment I'm going to make for this one, because it was the only thing I felt left out from the last one. I kind of forgot to mention about Team Plasma and their role in this, and how it's more important than any of the other teams in the series. Even more important than Team Rockets. These guys came the closest to actually achieving their goal. They were the closest, they just came down to a battle between you and N. Or Guy... Most people really like it and how deep it was. I mean... A lot of people just thought it was just freeing the Pokémon from their Pokéballs. It was actually more than that, it was actually about removing Pokémon from people altogether. That's their real goal. Of course, I'm not going to say any more, but that is, what they were, with that, that is what they were initially going for. Now I'm going to go over each individual comment, or at least the ones that caught my eye or something I need to go over. The first one comes from the person who first left a comment. Spencerp1. The fifth generation is pretty cool, but a lot of the new Pokémon look too much like Digimon now, sadly. But it was a fun, brand new experience. Digimon? I thought they looked like rejected Yu-Gi-Oh monsters. They just kind of like that distinct quality that makes them look, or... You know, basically just look like a Pokémon. It's hard to describe, but you kind of know what it is when you look at it. You look at Yu-Gi-Oh monsters, and then you look at the Pokémon. Maybe it's because they have bigger eyes or a smile or something, but... It's... You, you can tell, after spending some time and looking at them, you can kind of tell what's a Pokémon and what isn't, and most of them actually don't look like Pokémon, in my opinion. But once you get to... But there's another comment that goes over this later. One part of the comment from Alex Kiyosha, or Alex Kiyosha, I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to say it. Uh, triple battles take much more focus, and you need to think about your moves more, which was awesome, but there should have been more of them. Yeah, they didn't really focus that much on triple battles or the roulette battle. It's different depending on what version you get. You get more in one and the other, but I didn't really get to have that many triple battles anyway. I had white and you're supposed to have more, but... Oh well. MB Rules 123 wrote, The names just kind of suck, and most of the Pokémons are not like how they were. Most of the Pokémons don't look like Pokémons anymore, but I like how Pokémon act and move in battles. Tell me about it. You just look at them in a stiff animation and you're like, eh, who cares? You look at them in their movement and they're like, oh, that's kind of cool. I kind of, I wasn't really impressed with the way Zekrom looked. When you see him in battle, he kind of, he starts glowing blue and it, you, see, you start to see shades over him. And I like how Snivy crosses its, uh, its leaves or its appendages. And you get some Pokemon that are waving at you and, you know, they, they just, there's a lot more animation to it and it, everybody loved that part. I haven't seen one person who said I didn't like the way they moved or I didn't like the way they looked in it. Okay, we didn't like the way they looked, period, but the way they move was really good. Gladosti wrote, I think the games are doing pretty well. Nintendo kept it nice and simple, create the same game, add a lot of awesome new features, <coughs> Battle Royale, and update the graphics, and I love it every time. Sure, they have recreated some of the past games, but there's one aspect I keep coming back to. It's portable, so I can take it anywhere. The bathroom, the club, a funeral, and lots more. So basically, yeah, awesome, smiley face. I know I would like to see a sort of an MMORPG kind of Pokemon game on a home console, but really, the portability is one of the biggest uh, features and one of the best features the game has to offer. And I know that in, because of its addictive gameplay nature, that's really a positive note. West Ham has said, At first I was not interested in black and white as I was very disappointed by the third and fourth generations. However, I am loving white at the moment. This is mainly because it feels extremely fresh, with all new Pokémon, no old ones. Plus, I don't think I can go back to playing the older games after how exciting and fluid the battles look. 
It is hard to go back and play those old games, isn't it? I know there's another comic that's going to come later on that uh, says it kind of contradicts that, but it, or not really contradicting, but kind of continuing off of that, and it's from another person. But I'm not quite sure why a lot of people didn't like the third generation. Like I said earlier, I personally love the third generation. You, yeah, sure, a lot of the Pokemon back then didn't look that impressive, but the ones I did love are still of my, are still among my favorites to this day. Sceptile, Blaziken, Swampert, Latios, Salamence, Metagross, Gra uh, Groudon, Kyogre, Rayquaza. Those are Pokemon I still love, even to this day, so... And I also loved the new features they put in, like the natures and the abilities. Oh, and it also uh, had each Pokemon had its own sprite when it's in the box. You no longer had that generic plant or a head poking out of its water, out of the water. So that was kind of a nice little touch, and I also loved it for that. But yeah, it's it's kind of hard to go back and play the old games right now. But just another example of somebody who didn't love, who didn't like the third or fourth generation, and says the fifth one is just fantastic. Although JD Falcon 08 kind of wrote in a lot of stuff, and also again about how the third generation was a disappointment to him, uh, there is one thing I do agree with here with him on it. Uh, he says the feeling of catching them all will never return. Trying to catch all of them is dead to me, but trying to catch the new ones, or at least the ones before you beat the Elite Four, that was fun. But yeah, trying to catch them all that's been dead for a long time. Uh, I kind of stopped after. Once we got to the fourth generation, I kind of stopped. The closest I came to catching them all uh, after Gold Silver, I actually got them all then, but when I went to Ruby and Sapphire, the closest I got was 384. Now I just don't even care. I just, I scan for the ones I want. I search for their abilities, their natures, their moves, uh, their elements, and their stats. That's basically all I look for in a Pokemon right now. So trying to catch them all, it's dead. I'm sorry if I can't really say this right, it's Drabrahamotsirosini? I'm sorry, I just can't really read it Read it that well. Uh, he's basically, he's just leaving a comment about how he did not like how the automated level 100 option was taken out, and was very disappointed by that. He was also trying to tell me how I can find out about my dragon's nature, and uh, basically the only thing you can do is lose and then find out from your nature there. I kind of thought about doing that at first, but I kind of, but I didn't want to throw the match just to find out the nature. Just, I know that doesn't sound reasonable, but I didn't want to lose on purpose just to find out its nature. I've heard of another method where if you have a full team and you and all your boxes are full, then uh, Zekrom or Reshraham will be in the Dragon Spiral Tower for you to capture there. I wish I had known that earlier because I actually would have done that. I know it would have been easier to lose, but I. Never wanted to lose in this game. If I was about to lose, I'd just restart. Oh yeah, tell me like you've never done that either. I'll lose to someone playing against me, but I'm not going to lose to the computer. This next one comes from the Vodka Haze, and he goes over both the anime and the game. The thing I don't like about the anime is how Team Rocket have lost quite a bit of character. They don't appear much, but it is still much better than Diamond and Pearl. In fact, Black and White is better than Diamond and Pearl on almost every level. I think some Pokemon are uncreative, but I think there are more creative Pokemon than uncreative Pokemon. I also like Team Plasma. Almost as good as Team Rocket, almost, because of their story, better music, as well than ugly acoustics from DP. I think people should buy this game and realize that it is a great installment to the Pokemon franchise. Once old school fans play this, they won't view things in black and white. Sorry, I just had to make that pun. I can understand why people like Team Rocket for being the comic relief, but I'm gonna be honest, I could not stand them. Once they started getting into the rut of, hey, there's a completely common Pokemon that's that's not at, that's not special at all. We'll give it to our boss, and it'll do the chore of a household appliance, and he'll be so happy he'll give us riches beyond our wildest belief. I could not take that any longer. Once I got to the Battle Frontier and they changed the voices, I, it was just hard for me to watch it anyway. I watched. I actually looked at the episode pictures and wa and read the uh, synopsis, but that was pretty much it. I kind of lost interest in the anime. But Diamond and Pearl started up. I watched a few of them, lost interest right away. Diamond and Pearl was four years too long. It was so boring. I, I lost interest right away. I still kept up with the episode pictures and the synopsis. Just, you know, I, I'm, I've been watching this for about 14 years, since it started. I, I'm basically just interested to seeing how it actually ends. How is the whole thing supposed to wrap up? That's what I'm here for. I know the show is nothing more than a glorified advertisement, but I just 
I'm just curious as to how things are supposed to end in the end, you know? Still, black and white, definitely a huge improvement over every other saga except the first one. Although I did kind of like Hoenn, but only because its pacing was faster than that of Johto and definitely faster than that of Sinnoh. But yeah, black and white is definitely my second my second favorite of the, of the sagas. And Team Rocket just getting a brain and becoming secret, uh, super sacred agent spies is just huge change and I never thought I'd ever see that. I love it. But this is just a comment I kind of have to correct from Baby Black Yoshi, who wishes the old Pokemon were, would return. Well, they return after you beat the Elite Four. Not all of them, of course, but you can still trade away for them from your old games. You can transfer them. So it's not really that big of a loss. I mean, yeah, there's some Pokemon you can't catch, like Pikachu. I'm like, gosh, you can't catch Pikachu. Thank you. He's actually not in this game. Once you transfer him, thank you. But yeah, you can still bring them back if you if you really want them. Another comment regarding the anime from Zakaimon. The only thing so far that I hate about the Best Wishes anime is that Ash is still 10. At least make him 12 or older or something. He still can't be... He can't still be 10. This would be one long year then. Yeah, you're not the only one who has a problem with this. In fact, there's another person, I can't remember who it is, but he'll have that same comment later, and I'll be going over that just as well. But, and, and yeah, at the very least, he should be 12. There are there have been some events and some notes that have, have at least pointed that it's been at least two years, at least since uh, they got to Johto anyway. But yeah, I can't believe he's 10. He can't be 10. He, he shouldn't be 10. I don't know what they're doing. I know cartoons usually never age, but... Two years have definitely been noted to have passed in the uh, third movie preview, or not the preview, but with the Pikachu short film, and the one back in Kanto where they said it's been a year since we've been to Viridian City. Why they can't let him be just a little bit older, just be 12 or 13, I have no idea. Burner Shadow wrote, For me, it was like a new experience like most reviews says. Nintendo broke Pokemon down to the bare minimum and built it right back up to the top and higher. It was really cool. Yeah, they pretty much said, let's, let's take what works in the Pokemon series, get rid of all the annoyances, bring in all the additions or anything new that everybody's been wanting to see, and here's your brand new Pokemon game. It's no MMO, but it's the closest we're gonna get so far. Newsin41 wrote, I got through this game in two days. Fun, but so easy. I got my team at 60 before I fought NN Guidus. Four out of five, that's his score. Yeah, it was fun. A lot of other people have been saying the same thing, but a lot of other people have also been saying it is too easy. The first gym basically gives you the Pokemon you need, and you can't even challenge the gym until you get it. And no, you don't catch it. They give it to you. Uh, other gyms later on, they'll actually give you information on where to go for that Pokemon you need in, in order to beat the gym. But you know what? Uh, Pokemon wasn't always that challenging to me, so this didn't bother me at all. I was just trying to get through the game as fast as I could so I can start raising these guys up to level 100. So, the difficulty didn't bother me at all. Gman5852 wrote, well he actually wrote a lot, I'm only three badges in and love it. Definitely some great minor touches such as instead of watching the health bar slowly go down it just flashes and leaves so you can get back into the battle. Pokemon moving like you said about Timber which I actually put into battle just to watch that. But what really makes it awesome are the major changes like actually new Pokemon. I for once didn't look up the new ones online so every Pokemon was a surprise minus the starters and legendaries. I love this game. I also have yet to go online because my Pokemon is level 20, which isn't the best for online, and I don't have much to trade. One thing I truly dislike is the White Forest. It contains 32 Pokemon exclusive to Pokemon White, along with the 20 other exclusives, which creates a whopping 52 exclusives for White as to Black's 20. A little unfair there, but other than that, this is definitely a great game. Uh, I, I, I think Pokemon White is actually for the version is actually the version you would want if you didn't uh, have any of the previous versions of Pokemon to transfer from. Now, if I had known that, I actually probably would have gotten Pokemon Black instead. I didn't know all the differences right away, but there is definitely that difference. School Misfit wrote in, I watched some of the last season and I kind of enjoyed it. I hadn't seen Pokemon for a while, probably since the first season. I watched a few of the new ones and I have to agree with you on that. Basically, from what I said at the end of the last video, basically everything about the show was better. Silent is definitely a better replacement for Brock. Sorry Brock fans, I couldn't take him anymore. He was a running gag that needed some time off. Iris definitely reminds me of Misty with a little bit of May put in there. 
But Team Rocket's new attitude is definitely one of the biggest improvements the show ever has. It's a lot faster paced with fewer fillers than, the, than all the other sagas so far. And Ash will catch more than just the traditional six in his team. He'll actually start rotating. Jack and Dexter 19988 wrote, I loved Black and White. It felt like an amazing reboot of the entire series. It brought back memories of me loving Pokemon back in the late 90s through the new millennia. It definitely was that reboot the series needed, huh? I found it a little funny that some of the new Pokemons were trying to imitate the older ones. Pidove reminded me a lot of Pidgey. Timber reminded me a lot of Machop. Sock and Thor were kind of echoing that of Hitmonlee and Hitmonchan. And then you had Trubbish that was kind of the, rem the reminiscent of Grimer. Which kind of goes into what Izzy Saru wrote. Each generation has had some lame designs. Trubbish designed after a trash bag? Dude, look at Grimer and Muck. They are piles of grime and muck. Not to mention all the evolution does aesthetically is make Grimer bigger. Also, minus this lame trend of having Ash fail miserably in front of his rival all the time, the anime is going uber great. I'm a big Team Rocket fan, and their new personality is great. Smiley face. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Team Rocket's new personality? Best thing to happen to the series. And if you don't know why, you need to go watch it and then you'll find out. Ah, uh, now here's that comment I was talking about earlier. Uh, that goes back to what Vodka has said about Team Rocket. This is from Whoopmaster's Soar SX. Now I wholeheartedly agree with you that these are probably the best games in the series and I love them to death. Although I wasn't crazy about some of the designs of some of the Pokemon either at first myself, but there are some really awesome Pokemon in this game, like you said, did an awesome job of trying to take the series back to its roots. As for the anime, I'm really liking it so far, but I have a few complaints about it. One, Team Rocket should still retain a little bit of comic reliefness, because that's what made them awesome in the original series, but now that they're a little too serious. Don't get me wrong, I think it's awesome how they've actually become competent, but they could be a little more humorous. And two, another thing about Team Rocket, why did they have to dump Wobbuffet? I mean, really, I can understand dumping their other Pokémon, but why Wobbuffet? He was like the fourth member of the team. And don't give me that crappy excuse of they couldn't bring any Pokémon from the other region to avoid suspicion, but they still got to keep me out. And yes, he may be an integral part of the team, but if Wobbuffet could have arisen so much suspicion, Meowth could create double the suspicion because not only is he from a different region, he's also a talking Pokémon. Which I'm pretty sure has always made Team Rocket stick out like a sore thumb when Ash and his friends were around, since they would hear about a talking Meowth and instantly know what was up. I'm not exactly a Wobbuffet fan, sorry to say, but the biggest reason why they didn't want him there, and it's not just because they didn't want to have Pokémon not from that region, excluding Meowth, because he had a better chance of hiding his identity, but with Wobbuffet, you know, they're trying to avoid suspicion, and Wobbuffet kind of blows their cover all the time. If they want to be taken more seriously, they had to get rid of the guy that's always blowing their cover. That's just the way I see it. Here's another comment so long and had to be filled up in three comments. This one coming from Nap1300. And so I voice my opinion. Everything that you said in your video is exactly true. It seems like a brand new experience, good animations, and the TMHM thing makes it great, but some of the designs are just plain dumb. Trash bag Pokemon? Game Freak needs to come up with a better idea than that. Of course, it also throws in some great designs like Superior, Hydreon, and the absolutely adorable Victini. Some things you didn't bring up though were the music and the story, which were absolutely great. Music-wise, a ton of the tracks are just plain awesome, like In Battle and the Red Area Remix. And the story has to be one of the best ones yet. At first it seems like you're trying to take down another evil team, but this team's motivation isn't selfish. It wants to free Pokémon from being forced into battle by humans. It's like the roles switched. The people who support fighting are the good guys, and the ones that want to end it are bad. An end story just tops it off. A touching story of a kid who grew up with only Pokemon as friends and hates to see them forced into battle. He develops, however, and sees that you are the ideal trainer that treats his Pokemon as friends instead of tools. Eventually, his idea of separation between men and Pokemon and your idea of unity is put to the test to see which idea is stronger. Of course, the actual final battle isn't as climactic. If they took, out, if they took that out, this would be the best Pokemon story ever. The final battle needed to take place because it needed to show their motivation for why they wanted to separate the people in Pokemon. However, other than that, your comment is exactly right, and you go into a lot of detail, and there was just no way I could not show that on, in this video. Alright, to top that, we'll go on to the next one. This one comes from Piano Deity 8 I just got Pokemon White today, which was four days ago from when this video was put up, and it is by far one of the best Pokemon games I've played in a long time. I think one of the biggest improvements that weren't mentioned were the graphics. Most places in the Anova region are made with 3D landscapes, one of the best examples being Huon City. 
This was present in the Generation 4 games, but only in a few areas. When compared to black and white, though, there's obviously been a change for the better. There's definitely a lot of uh, 3D places like the bridges, the desert ruins, and of course, Huon City. So, yeah, good point to bring up there. Game Universe 13 commented, At first, I thought the new Pokémon looked horrible and poorly done. Example, the Pokémon that looks like a coffin. But after watching the series a bit, I saw how well done the Pokémon were made. P.S. I agree with UCGS001 on how I hate how Ash has made noobish in the series. If anything else, Iris should be the noob. Well, she's not the noob, but in a sense, she kind of they do kind of make her a noob. Her Axu is new, and it's... It's, well, it's not new, but it's a, it was newly hatched. And it's very weak and very pathetic, if you want to know the truth. I do like her role in the series, though. She, she has more of an importance to be with the team right now. She's a... She, you see, Ash is going to get an egg later on, and it hatches into a Scraggy, and it's weak. And because Axu is weak, they're going to be training it with each other. So I think that's cool that, uh, for once, Ash has a, a partner in the team that's going to be helping him train in the battles uh, periodically. So far in the later episodes, we get to see them battle twice, which, you know, uh, which of the other uh, uh, traveling companions have ever done that, at least, or at least that much, or that often. And it's still, there's still a lot more to go. Still on the topic of the anime, Omega YD29 wrote, I hate Ash in the new show. The battles don't even make sense anymore. Level 100 Pikachu lost against the first gym leader? Again? Oh, when did the show ever make sense? Remember back in Kanto, he won against a Rhydon using Thunderball on the nose, or on the horn. Did that make any sense? No. So the show never made sense. It is stupid that Pikachu keeps getting nerfed down every saga, but if he stayed at level 100 like everybody says, then Ash would just start winning every battle left and right and there'd be no conflict or drama. I know it's kind of a lame excuse, but there you go. Uzumaki Shadow pretty much wrote underneath him, Let's not forget about the fact that Pikachu also got owned by two Pokemon and had an advantage against, both under level. I assume you mean uh, either the Pidove or the Woobat, and of course Panpour. Didn't even land a hit on Panpour, that's what really just irritates me. Couldn't even land a quick attack, come on. Granted, Crest knew how to handle this situation, but still, a hit? He couldn't even land a hit, it's just so sad. Ah, oh, Threadnought, always trying to make me laugh. It's not the 5th gen! It should be on the 3DS! It should be on the 3DS! I'll be getting it eventually, then I'll work on a new set of monsters, a new Shuckle and Brawlzong who will enjoy kicking your guard chops butt in a rematch. There's a new Grass Steel type, which would make a nice addition to my team. Some of the new moves seem to be made for taking down sweepers, so it's more balanced toward a wider variety of strategies. Looking forward to what you can put against me, Threadnought. Now, if you don't really know what he's talking about, he's saying that every generation comes out on a new handheld. Usually, no two generations uh, share the same handheld. Although, you do have to remember that Gold and Silver were also playable on the Game Boy, along with Red and Blue. Crystal eventually came out and was exclusively played for the Game Boy Color, which is why I'm believing that the inevitable Pokemon Grey will be a 3DS exclusive. Ampharos Man 64 wrote, while my favorite in the series is still Gold and Silver, I see this game as a great experience and a big step forward for the series. It fixes a lot of inconveniences and overall gives the feeling of a new experience for once. Like you said though, most of the new Pokémon belong in a Trubbish. We have really cool ones such as Crocodile and Galvantula, etc. And then we have really crappy ones like Trubbish. I just think that there shouldn't have been so many of them created for the game. Well, more than half of them definitely just felt like rushed out gimmicky Pokémon that don't even you would never want to even train in the first place, let alone catch. There were so many of them because they were really trying to recapture the feeling of the first one by having that wide range of variety. A lot of us don't like the same Pokemon, but overall I do believe that no matter what, you're going to be able to find at least a team of six that you're going to love. In fact, that team of six might just turn out to be your favorite in the series overall. Maybe, just maybe, but trust me, once you start to actually train some of them, you'll really start to love them and maybe grow a little attached to them. Once I found out my chandelure could learn energy ball, done deal. Going back to an even older comment from before, I can't remember who said it, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's doing these one at a time and going through the comments will do that to you, make you lose your memory. To be, uh, This one comes from Cosmic Luigi 9000 saying, To be honest, I think the fact that there's that many improvements could ruin the older games in the series. Example, after playing my first Pokemon game, Platinum, 
I played Emerald and didn't enjoy it as much because it wasn't as much fun as Platinum. Well, the thing is, you, you really do have to play these games one after the other, after the other, after the other, in that continuation of Red, Blue, Yellow, Gold, Silver, Crystal, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, and Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, and then finally Black and White. You need to have that feeling of nostalgia, otherwise you're really not going to have a reason to go back and play these games. Unless you really want to experience them, but you don't want to do it right after you've just played the brand new one. You want to give it some time, and then wait till you have that longing, nostalgic feeling. The last comment I'll go over is from the Linkonards, just a response to his comment. My opinion is that Pokemon will soon come to an end since the games have repeatedly consisted of the same concept style when I look at it. No offense to the people who still like Pokemon, but to me, it's not going to last as long as you might think. Who knows, pray that I'm wrong for all I care, lol. I think you're forgetting one very important thing, Linkonar. No matter what style it consists of, as long as Pokemon continues to make in as, uh, almost as much money as Mario, Nintendo's not gonna let it die. What I would honestly like to see is if they take a brand new approach to it. Maybe take Red and Blue and remake it into sort of an action RPG. Just to see how that would work. Just experiment with an action RPG Pokemon type game. I would honestly love to see that. You know, take a break. Don't do the sixth generation right away. I honestly would love to just see an action RPG in the Pokemon series. 